Hello friends, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. All right, hello and welcome again, everybody. Always a great honor, pleasure to be here and privilege. I mean, there's just nothing like being able to share with the world and other people, wherever you may be, the things that we've come to know in relationship with the Most High and studying the gospel and examining the prophetic word. Uh, it, it's a great blessing to have this fellowship with all of you. I know that um, it's been a great blessing on my life, especially all all these years. I've learned so much from all of you as well, and I look forward to continuing the journey. And um, tonight again, I'm joined by uh, Lisa George, and she's going to be assisting me. We're going to be going through the Ask Me Anything. And so uh, go ahead and put your questions into the chat and make them all caps so we can recognize and we'll go uh, one by one as we can. How are you, Lisa? Hey, Zen. I'm doing just great. Um, just a, another beautiful day here and it's, the sun is still up over here. It's probably down where you're at, <laughs> but here in Hawaii, it's only three o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, just enjoying, enjoying doing some things at home now that, like I was saying yesterday, we have these projects that have been ongoing for the last three or four months now are completed. So can focus more at home and getting back into our studies and, and uh, just focusing on the ministry. It's just, it's nice, kind of like a nice relief to, be able to come together with with you and with everyone here and and study as well. It's such a it's an honor to be here. Yeah, um, I I fully agree. And thank everybody again in the chat. Uh, we appreciate all of you. Uh, hello, uh, Rachel and Adrian and Amber and all the rest. Sherry, thank you so much for moderating. And uh, of course, we're always praying for Tammy and um, looking forward to when she can come and join us and interact and hang out. So, uh, but yes, um, I was, I was going to get you to share one thing, but it, it just, Oh um, yeah. It has to do with your, cause you were raised as the daughter of a pastor um, and what uh, has your dad or your mom, your family, do they listen to any of your shows? Have they, um, you know, embraced the work that you're doing now? Or how is well, that? <laughs> that's a very, that's a very good question. I, I think that maybe others can relate with me as far as family is concerned. And I, at first I thought my dad would be on board, like totally, because, you know, he teaches. Yeah, overjoyed, sure. doing the work. <laughs> He's taught me a lot. I mean, he throughout my life. I mean, I, because of my parents, I've had a really good foundation in the Bible and uh, just the, the leadership. And I mean, there, of course, there's some downsides to being a pastor's child. And he was also my principal at the parochial school I attended for elementary school anyway. And um, so there's downsides to that. There's uh, a lot of high expectations, it seems, the community holds for a family of a pastor and um, everything that goes along with that, with the stress and and just uh, always kind of feeling like I was on the stage. I, um, but, you know, we, we took a cruise with my dad and his wife. My mom passed away when I was 26 years old. She had uh, ovarian cancer and I was her caregiver. And actually that that's another rabbit trail. That, that's gonna be like the introduction to my book I'm working on right now that my experience with her really shaped how I view disease and natural healing in, in a number of different ways. But. Um, my dad remarried about nine years after she passed away, and he and his wife, I mean, they met on a Lutheran dating website, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're, I know, <laughs> and, and um, they, they're both very strong in the church still. I mean, he just told me that he was elected the president of his congregation, he says he's retired, so, you know, always involved with something to do with, with the church that they're part of, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great community. It's a great way to have fellowship with others. As but the part that I was always missing was the the I felt like I'd come away kind of empty, like I just kind of hearing the same thing over and over. And 
you know, it's great. I mean, I'm not knocking the salvation message at all because that's something that we should really make sure our focus is on. But as far as um, studying, you know, getting into deep, especially the Old Testament, uh, like I feel like I know the New Testament back and forth, like <laughs> I can quote so many passages and know all the stories and everything because they're have very heavily reviewed in sermons in the church. But the Old Testament just, it kind of gets put on the side and and um, my, that was a comment my dad had made when we were teaching on the cruise that we went on with them last year is he said, you know, um, Lisa, I can really get on board with a lot of the things that you guys teach. but I really wish that you focus more on the Gospels. <laughs> and I'm thinking that's what it's focused on all the time, <laughs> which right. I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that in order to know what happens in the end, you have to know what happens in the beginning and, and the right version of it too. So he's Absolutely. really, yeah. And the, the whole, um, the whole biblical cosmology thing really kind of turned him off initially to our teachings. And he, he, he has come into our class several times, but especially when, when Isaac and Kaylee run the class, when Noble and I are not there, it seems he's even more likely to come and support them. So Whatever it takes, you know, it, <laughs> that's a great question, though. I mean, I, it would be nice if, if they were more a part of our ministry, too. But they're, they're really, um, it, it's hard once you're in that, the 501c3 type of community that it, it's kind of like if you decide that you want to leave, you're almost, it's almost like you're shunned in a way. That, that, that's how kind of what happened with us. Yeah, um, uh, you know, we've, we've seen this um, for a very long time uh, and ever you know my the first book that i published after my stint with poetry uh, with the first three books that i published they were poetry books my fourth book lucifer father came was uh, you know explaining what had occurred in the garden the enmity between the bloodlines um, and i did share even though i knew you know, in explaining that topic, that issue, to always come from the King James first and share that viewpoint and then elaborate and add to. And then, you know, uh, but I did, I never realized, and I, you know, myself, I had not grown up in the church where I was at Sunday school uh, every weekend. Uh, you know, we were always at the, at the churches or in the facilities, we would go to different ones and check out different, you know, uh, organizations and places. And but I never realized how much uh, people are against extra biblical and anything that is non-canonical. It's just so surprising to me, you know. And again, because of and we talked about this last time about how. There's so many books, even in the canonical, the 66 books, uh, the canon, there's 23 manuscripts mentioned in there that are not available. That um, and, and some have even come out, you know, in recent years, but uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And then how people hate the Apocrypha when it was part of the original release of the 1611 King James, uh, but yet not realizing that they're like, oh, 66 books, you know, only, uh, that's all we ever need. And, uh, and so I've dealt with a lot of the criticism that comes with opening yourself to new material, examining the, uh, other ancient sources that are coming out. And especially now with, you know, the three volumes of the, uh, test New Testament Apocrypha. Those oh, yeah. books are amazing. Go ahead. No, totally. I, I love those books. I'm so glad that you recommended those. And I believe that Sherry Papin in the chat also, she and I have had conversations that she also purchased those three. And they're just, it opens up. I mean, part of me wanted to tell my dad, okay, you want, you want the Gospels? We got New Testament Apocrypha because they really like helped the Gospels come more alive and to realize that the apostles, each of the apostles wrote one, like at least one book, you know, like right, it wasn't right. just, I mean, all we get in the Gospels are two of the apostles, like Matthew and John. The other two, I'm not even sure how the, how whoever chose all these particular books to stick in the canon 
could gloss over all the rest of them and just choose like only just Matthew and John, those two, and count those as gospels along with someone with Luke. I mean, I don't want to discount his information because they were believers as well, but it seems like we'd especially want to hear the apostles, those who had like constant one-on-one -on -one communication with the Messiah. Absolutely, and that knew him the most intimately and that hung out with him and were around him, you know, especially like a lot of people don't realize that some of the apostles were his step siblings um, from Joseph's previous marriage, you know, like Thomas and James. Uh, James became the first bishop of the Jerusalem church. Um, but, you know, again, and he was, he and Didymus Thomas were the step siblings, the half brothers of Yahushua. They, knew him best and wrote the infancy gospels and shared all of that information and you know a lot of people have never heard don't know about all of that um we we do have a question and i don't want to miss it um private sojourner asks is the healing protocol only available in your book uh and then she's saying something about her son but your message was cut off sister so um, but with regard to the things we were talking about last night, it, if you would like to reach out to Lisa and contact her, I'm sure she would be glad to, you know, speak with you and give you more information. She is writing a book on this protocol and trying to bring it forth. And I think, um, you know, paired together what you have you know, are working on now together with what. Uh, Sheila had written about what her and Rob had undergone and went through and how, you know, there's a protocol that that kills as well. Um, right, right. Yeah, so those two things uh, I think would be so eye-opening and awakening for the not only the American community but the world community and so important, you know, uh, my people are killed for lack of knowledge, and certainly yes. that is the truth of the matter. Oh, it's so true. And yes, of course, if anybody has like an emergency situation or someone that they know that's dealing with the, the C word or other uh, diseases that might be a part of that, please reach out to me. Um, I do have, uh, it's not everything that's in the book. It's just like a couple of sheets. I, I've, I've sent it to Zen and several other people. Um, to it, it's just like the list of foods that you can eat and there's like a list of um, it's it's part of the protocol but not the entire thing so if you want to reach out to me and I can answer any questions that you have uh, this is it's a large part of my ministry is this healing component so you can find me at biblical Hebrew Hawaii at gmail.com and maybe Sherry if you could stick that in the chat for me that would be awesome it's biblical Hebrew Hawaii at gmail.com and uh, just put in that you listen to the shows and that you and maybe the situation if you can if you know what stage that they're in or uh, if if they are having symptoms or you know if they've if they've decided to take the the uh, American Medical Associ Association um, treatments and are having a lot of side effects I mean there's there's a lot of things that I can answer that you're not going to hear from a doctor and again a disclaimer I am not a doctor I'm actually really grateful I'm not one uh, just because they have to follow a certain there are certain protocols and like Zen was saying before, yeah and they only just depend on pushing these this medication then they make they do make a large amount of money from the treatments that they are taught that will help people but those treatments are not always the best for our bodies if that makes any sense i'm trying to d not get censored here but yes yeah, please read yeah, yeah. You're doing yeah. good. And, you know, we got to tiptoe around things, unfortunately, and it is what it is. And, uh, you know, even the scriptures warn us of the whole pharmacia and uh, corporate medicine and all that. Um, and certainly that is the focus is on treating symptoms and um, of covering up, you know, illness and disease and not really getting to the root cause or looking at the origins of how things could have came about, but they just, you know, treat what they see. And uh, 
a lot of times what they do makes things a lot worse, you know, like for people that take the whole Prilosec and the Nexium and all that, uh, uh, it, it furthers and causes greater complications. Uh, and so, but definitely, and we'll move on from this really quick, but uh, with regard to your gut, you know, and the health, um, what we eat, what we consume, what we put into the body, what we use as fuel, those things are critical, absolutely important to understand what you're eating, the sources, where it comes from, uh, supporting local farmers, growers, uh, you know, not these industrial uh, conglomerates that are spraying and throwing all these insecticides and fertilizers and things of that nature, which also affect and cause harm, Roundup and all that. I mean, uh, uh, it's, yeah, but you know, let me get you to comment and then we'll go. Oh, forward. sure. Um, no, but yes, I, I just put my uh, information in the chat to reach out to me. Uh, if, if, you know, if you guys don't know, I'm Hebrew Hawaiian in the chat. <laughs> a lot of people think that that's noble, but that's actually me. He's got a, another name that, that he comes into chat once in a while on. But uh, yeah, please reach out to me there at the email in the chat and uh, just I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help. It, to me, it's it's a little bit tougher to help people long distance than if I can see them face to face and kind of their situation. And what I, what we like to do is go and meet them in person and meet their caregiver at their home so I can kind of see how their house is set up and make sure the caregiver is on board with everything because one of the toughest struggles for me with trying to change the diet, and I don't know if this, I think that you might have struggled with this a bit the first two weeks that you were changing to Zen, was um, uh, there that sugar addiction, it's really strong. Oh, <laughs> I mean, gosh. it's one of the most addictive things on earth, I think, at this point, after going through that, because it just, when you're, when you're experiencing the die-off effects of getting the sugar out of your body it it hurts and it makes you just so hungry and kind of irritable and you can't at the same you want to sleep and you're extremely exhausted but at the same time you you, you just feel like you can't because everything is just sugar just makes your body just like wired and so um yeah i i we go over that with the caregiver and also we instruct the caregiver to be on the same diet as the person they're taking care of because if they have foods in the home that are not on the list and they're toxic to someone who's healing, uh, when especially when they're when they're on the protocol and the first couple weeks, they're you're craving all of the foods that you're not supposed to eat basically, <laughs> and so if they're in the house or if there is like ice cream in the freezer that you're not supposed to touch because that's one of the top inflammatory foods, the the dairy and sugar ice cream. Uh, especially if it's made by brands here in the U.S. that add all kinds of other stuff into it. And if that's something that you formerly were craving, like myself, that's going to be the first thing you want to reach for if you're hungry in the middle of the night, instead of the vegetables or instead of like Okinawan sweet potato or something that, that, you're, that you can eat that's on the list that won't reactivate all of that sugar. So, um, but I'll do whatever I can long distance. I'll, the, if, if, you want to work with me that there's that's no problem i'm more than happy and you guys can reach out and thank you sherry for putting the my contact information there in the chat we do have a couple questions though zen did you want to um address these two there's uh i think they might be a, a little bit short like um, matt was asking what happened to tfr you're explaining that to me a little bit uh you know that's a really good question with regard to what is going on i don't know the exact details but um i knew and had heard several months ago that you know the government has been after truth frequency radio uh for i guess the you know the truth dissemination and is not happy with the work that we do here and so and I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I certainly will reach out and I should hear at some point, but uh, things are odd. And so I'm not exactly positive, but at some point I will, you know, I'll learn, I'll find out and I'll give people an update. But uh, as to right now, you know. 
I, I don't have any further details, but. All right, um, there was another question from Patrick. He was asking if you know, if in, did insects bite people before the flood? It was, and if they did or didn't, is there any scripture that you know about that? Insects biting people? Um, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I've never read in particular or heard in, uh, but I'm assuming that, you know, insects have been here since even before the fall of mankind, humanity, and I'm guessing that they have been biting uh, and attacking people, you know, since they've been here on the earth. Now, whether there's truth to that scriptural, you know, I, I don't know because I don't ever remember anywhere reading about this kind of thing. So, uh, but that's a very intriguing question. Yeah, I never heard that question asked before, so I, I have no idea either. But thank you, Patrick. That'd be that's an interesting thing to kind of look out for. If there's more books released, maybe there is something on that. I don't know. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but that's a very intriguing question. <laughs> yeah, um, I see Leonard put down in here that he had a heart attack December fifth. Um, on, and he's on 11 medications. So I, please, Leonard, oh reach out gosh. to me. Yeah, reach out to me. Um, you know, I've, I have helped a few people. One of them was Tammy George with changing diets and taking certain supplements that will help with your heart. Uh, and again, I'm not a medical doctor, but if you want to reach out to me, I can give you some suggestions and then maybe you can share what your medications are. And it's always important, though, if you are prescribed things, look up what the side effects are for each one of those medications. That's something I had to do. And a lot of times we just accept it and trust the doctor and um, and then you wonder why certain things feel off when you're taking these and it's supposed to be treating something and it, it's causing something else to happen. So that might be a good place to start, Leonard, is just looking up each one of those, finding all the side effects and find what else they're, they are prescribed for, find out like what they're made of and um, that would that would be what I would suggest where to start with that. Also, um, you know, some counterintuitive uh, reactions and side effects that come from uh, combining because there, I think they said something like 150,000. It may be even be more uh, people die every year from medical misdiagnosis and medical you know, uh, protocols and treatments that uh, should not have been prescribed or used. Um, and so that's all. That's a lot of people, you know, I mean, wow. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, you think about it, more more people pass away in the hospital than anywhere else. I mean, like right, right. <laughs> for, yeah. for various reasons, of course. But yeah, the the malpractice is, is pretty scary. I've I've I actually outlined my experience with that in my book. And then, of course, Sheila Skiba's book. And if anyone can purchase that and if they want to know even more details about that. But it's it's a scary thing to put your your life in the hands of someone that you're expecting to be able to help you and and heal you and and then to have things go wrong that seems like they could be avoided yeah yeah i agree um marlin 19 asks when is the new moon day and is it the day after the sliver moon um I just posted a link in the chat, or you can go and check for yourself uh, and confirm the new moon sighting. And I, it is my opinion, uh, opinion that the Rosh Kadesh is connected to the appearance of what is the waxing crescent, the thin sliver of the new moon as it appears in western skies shortly after what is the lunar conjuncted sabbath and that when that thin sliver appears that uh it, i count that as you know the the first the, that actual day of rosh kadesh 
uh, my friend Diane uh, Cover, they count the very next day as New Moon Day. Um, and my friend Troy Miller, who just released his books on the creation calendar, uh, you can find them at Sacred Word Publishing now, uh, dot com. He counts from the lunar conjunctive, the dark moon, just like uh, World's Last Chance. Um, but in the research that I've done, in my most of my truth comes from decrypting the Book of Enoch, the book on the courses of the heavenly luminaries. That is my uh, predominant basis foundation for this information, the calendar, and I share and speak about all that in the flat earth as key to decrypt the book of enoch i've talked about this numerous times about how even the word uh, the verb kadash which is the basis for the word kadesh meaning the time of the new moon or the head of the month or you know um, it, it, you know again it's my opinion that that word kadash is connected to renewing repairing uh, rebuilding its light and so that you know again is the waxing crescent because the very first sliver leads to what would be the full moon in 14 days so uh, do you have a yeah. comment no no that, that's great I've I'm still working on trying to figure all that out and I know there's several different uh, interpretations that people have put out there and we enjoyed speaking with Diane at the conference. She's she seems like she's very detailed about the her uh, the way that she figures it out. We we go out and observe the moon as often as we can here, and it even makes it a little more confusing because Hawaii is going to be a little bit off compared to like the East Coast. So um, we're still trying to get that down, but you know it, it it's definitely better than constantly celebrating on Sundays. I think that we've come pretty far from doing that so that i think that that's good the most high knows that we're working on this and we want to get this right according to how he has ordained everything for signs and seasons for the luminaries but uh i wanted to get this question from donna i'm so sorry donna i missed your question sure. kind of way back where but she has asking you zen do you think the fallen angels built tartarian buildings and was the mud flood theory the actual world flood uh, really, really good question. Uh, let me take a sip of water here, and then I'll get into this. One okay. Time. Yeah, and you also mentioned too, Donna, the orphan trains. I, I am very intrigued with those just because my grandmother was on an orphan train, and she was adopted when she was a baby, her and her adopted brother, and I uh, have firsthand account. Like, I used to ask my great-grandmother, like, you know, how did they decide to adopt? They couldn't have children. And that also really shaped my interest in adopting as well. So those orphan trains, that's something else. I mean, when those came out, according to our hidden history, I could really, I had a bunch of firsthand information on those. Zen? Um, okay, yeah, with regard to Tartaria, um, the mud floods and the timing of all of that. Um, it's my opinion that the destruction of the first world age, which is described as the catabol uh, in Second Peter, the Greek word is catabol, which is like complete annihilation, devastation, uh, the world that then was perishing by water. And that word perishing means like completely annihilated, destroyed. Um, but in, in my opinion, the mud floods are connected to a, a more current time. And I believe that they are uh, the liquefaction, if that's the, the right word for that. But uh, I think that it was connected to the eight, somewhere around the you know, maybe late 1700s and into the 1800s, and that there's some basis for uh, this explained by different historians they talk about you know the a time when the mississippi river uh, the, the course and all that was modified affected and even the great lakes when you look at modern maps 
Uh, it wasn't like even in the 1600s, 1700s that California was an island off of the coast of the continental United States. And uh, the Great Lakes did not even appear on the maps at that time. So there was definitely a major occurrence, cataclysm, whatever that affected and caused the liquefaction, which uh, swallowed up a lot of these ancient buildings and these ancient structures worldwide. And certainly they were built by a very intelligent, a very highly technologically advanced culture, civilization, people. Um, And if you look at the architecture, it is also cyclopean in nature. It's a megalithic, much like, you know, Petra and a lot of the ancient structures. There's been huge tunnel systems that have uh, been found and have come to revelation recently and they are also a very much larger like somebody very much bigger had built them um and so i do without a doubt believe that uh it was it, it is connected but even the tartarian and like i said the first 10 generations of humanity they would be what we would consider uh and call giants and so um so yeah the ancient these are ancient structures um how long they existed i don't know but i do believe that the the worldwide mud flood which swallowed them up and sank them into the uh, into the mud and into the the ground in, in a lot of places worldwide and that these ancient structures were dug up uh, was during the time of the establishment of uh, America and the cities and uh, all around this country that a lot of these capital buildings and things were already in place in that time. And so I do believe that they are more modern uh, as far as the the structures themselves. They could be certainly very ancient. How ancient, I don't know. I do believe they were created by a race of well, very much larger uh, statured people, uh, whether giants and uh, even the Thracian people, the ancient, especially right post-flood, um, they were also what we would consider giants. You know, Shem, after, the, after Noah, Shem lived 600 years, and he still, I mean, that's a, that's a long time, a lot of years, and, you know, how big would you grow? Uh, in that time, I don't know, but, and so, and with regard to the orphan trains, uh, I don't really know about that. I'm, so if you would like to comment on that, please do. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I'm i very intrigued with this topic too, with uh, the whole Tartaria. I went down that entire rabbit hole, and especially since Noble and I have traveled quite extensively worldwide, just even before I knew about the the ancient buildings being quite a bit older and and all the I used to wonder why do these buildings have watermarks and instantly I would think okay maybe these were like underground uh, you know under the water during the flood or um, but it seems like like what you're saying is true Zen like there could have been another incident that wasn't like a worldwide flood but like you're saying the liquid faction and there's evidence of that in many different areas and of course you can see um, even here in Hawaii, we have like what you'd call the mud flood buildings where the, the bottom level is the windows are like half right. underground and who would build a, a nice, gorgeous building like that, you know, and, and have the equipment to even dig such an extensive basement that most of these buildings have. And um, but the orphan trains that like I was saying earlier, I'm extremely intrigued with those and how um, there's been some pretty recent research by a channel, especially named Mind Unveiled. I don't know if you follow them, Zen, but they're kind of a younger uh, research group. And I don't agree with everything that they put out, of course, but the 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 recent research they've done on the orphan trains, and they tend to focus mainly on Tartaria and things that are, are lost history, but they uh, put a pretty involved video out a couple months ago on the Cabbage Patch Kids. 
And I don't know if you remember those. It was kind of like a, a big deal when I was little anyway to have, I, I never had one, but I had friends that had these kind of halfway creepy looking dolls <laughs> that came with their birth certificate and they came with like diapers you could change and, and all kinds of like, a little bit strange stuff and the group that did the research on the cabbage patch uh kit the cabbage patch kids found in france in like the the mid to late 1800s like hundreds of postcards that were actual pictures of babies being sold and um and kind of like calling that an, an adoption but they would call that that's where the name cabbage patch kids actually came from was from something that happened in france and it also involved the scientists i don't know if you've seen in the world fairs displays of how they had actual incubators where you could grow a baby a, a live baby uh, on display and and you could grow a live baby instead of in nine months in the womb they could grow it in just a few hours or a few weeks or you know just very bizarre things to have on display at a fair where it just like quite a few live children being grown by these incubators. But, you know, I don't put it past them. They, you know, that we know that they've, they've been doing cloning since at least the days of the Egyptians uh, with that, which in my opinion, that's why they have preserved their mummies so well so that they can always have DNA uh, ready to, if they decide they want to clone someone, but uh, even more so just, the way that they populated what we now call the United States, the new world. And uh, it seems like the, the civilization that was here before we were, um, this is also from reading that book about the lost continent of Mu and how what we call the United States or the, Mer the Americas, including Latin America and Mexico, was like a really large part of Mu and, and the Canaanites. And we know from the Bible that the Canaanites were the ones building the first cities uh, building walls, uh, putting taxes on people, and and from your excellent research, then we can really link that into Tenochtitlan as being the city of of Enoch, that um, not not Enoch the good, but of course the son of Cain, as as you you've put that information out there, how that name Enoch is right in there in the word Tenochtitlan, mm -hmm. right? And so that would make sense that with that research uh, coupled with the lost continent of Mu, as um, how they have the same deities, the, and we know the Canaanites, I mean, Cain himself, it says, built like 65 cities, I believe. And so it would make sense that these ancient buildings could have even gone back to even that far. And then when the Masons came along and they, they basically just remodeled it and repurposed it and then stuck their stamp of 1800 and something on there, mostly in the late 1800s, I think, uh, that to just show that yes, these these are this is our work when it was actually just a like a remodel job. But that that's kind of my two cents on that whole topic. And I would have I would highly encourage you guys if you want to watch a, a, more information on the Cabbage Patch Kids, you can find that on Mine Unveiled. And they've actually published a book, their first book, full color on that. It's also available, right. yeah, on Amazon, and um, and on their website. I think it's mindunveiled.com. Um, I'll have to double check that, but yeah, it's very, it's very, their work is very intriguing and I like it because it's very visual, like in their book, they actually have photos of all these postcards that they came up, that they ordered, they came across, they got them like preserved in the plastic packets. So they're, they're very excellent shape, but just the, the level of, I mean, they have babies heads coming out of cabbage, uh, cabbages i mean just uh, babies hanging on a door and like these little bags are just their heads sticking out and saying uh, for sale i mean just really bizarre oh things my God. yeah in the 1800s and their photos so it's like uh, and they even had a film i think um one of the videos that i watched from mine unveiled and uh, showed part of this film that i think it was one of the first films put out by the french and it was a silent film, of course, with just music. And it, it just shows how these children are were being grown even. It just It's so bizarre that all of these things were hidden from us. But it would definitely make sense if they needed to quickly populate an entire land mass and have a, have a, a generation of workers that would serve the controllers or whatever you want to call them. But that would be a, a quick way to do that for sure. That is so odd. They grow in babies. <laughs> yeah. uh, never, that's, 
uh, but good. it doesn't surprise me. You know, they are have been doing that kind of thing. I think for a very long time. I also think that's one of the reasons why they are seeking out. You know, the bodies of like the Nephilim giants and all that, and that that kind of technology is also being utilized for um, super soldier programs. You know, that kind of thing. But. Yes, yes, that comes to mind too. And there's a couple other questions along the same topic. Yeah, then yeah, please. There's um, I am what I am. Sixty six is asking, have you heard of meltology? It's um, I think he's referring to like the melted buildings. The evidence of that, that it's like a kind of new study. He says. Uh no. Uh, okay, I, I can that. give a little information. I've studied that a bit too, just because um, I noticed it is when you look at certain pictures of ancient buildings it does look like it's pretty melted and i think like the grand canyon is a pretty good example where some of the structures in there they try to i mean you can totally see that there's statues and buildings underneath there's but it looks like it's melted heavily on from the outside and uh, I, i'm not sure what type of weaponry was used in order to have this super high heat in order to to melt these these stone structures but it's definitely a good interesting topic to look into and then there's uh jason and jessica miller are asking you zen why were so many of those building structures burned destroyed around the turn of the century have you have you um studied that part of it zen no not really i mean i've studied some looked into the mud floods and all that but i you know i haven't dedicated a large like some people that's all they do you know or yeah. like biblical cosmology that's all they do that's that's not what i do my my focus is reading and studying the scriptures and uh, extra biblical manuscripts and prophecy and all of that uh, so with regard to you know why they were destroyed you know, i i don't really know uh, i'm assuming that it, uh, it and it has always been this way that the most high has brought judgment against the fallen angels and uh, that culture and those people all throughout time going all the way back to Atlantis, the destruction of uh, Atlantis in a single hour, in a single day, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but I'm guessing, and you know, this, we don't even know about the Tartarian empire and what they were like, what they did and how judgment and why judgment was brought upon them. So, no, I, I can't really, I can't really, you know, uh, answer that because I don't know. So, do you? Yeah, I, I have, I can put my two cents on this. I've, I've done a little bit of research on this part. Um, and again, nobody's really 100% sure why, like you said, but some of the theories out there are that, um, and I see this, uh, let's see. The world is a theater. That this is one of the theories: uh, plasma weapons and harvested energy um, from it, from the ether, uh, the waters, and the electrical. That's one of the theories. Another one is because these ancient buildings had technology on them that provided free energy, and the whatever you want to call them, controllers, elite, whoever, the founders of this nation, the shadow government, they wanted to have us. Uh, be kind of like slaves to paying for electricity, paying for water, you know, as, get as much money out of the people as possible. So uh, that's one of the theories in order to do that, that uh, to not let us know that the technology back in the day, especially, you know, like as in prophecy, we're looking as to as it was in the days of Noah. So their technology had to be at least as high as ours is right now and, and most likely way more like what we're going to see in the, in the future, in the near future. Right. But uh, so, you know, they had to have AI, they had to have uh, energy, a way to have electricity. And, and we see on a lot of the old buildings, especially like during the World's Fair, they were able to light up like 100 percent. And this is supposedly before electricity had been invented. So, um, yeah, they, they had ways of powering things up, I think, a lot more than than we're even aware of. But I agree with you, Zen. There, there's just a lot of different theories out there, and there's not really a way to prove that or any of them 100%. Yeah, no, I mean, because so much has been hidden and changed, altered, and disappeared. And so, uh, yeah, but nobody is going to be able to 
stay with any certainty uh, as to you know what happened with the mud floods and all of that so yeah i agree with that but, i'm looking does anyone have any, if you have any questions for those of you just coming to the chat, make sure you put them in all caps so I can see them. I'm sorry, Zen, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Um, I was just going to say, you know, I, I know that uh, my friend Noel, he put a book out on mud floods and um, other people have as well. I think Martin Ledecky, he put a book out on mud floods and and so, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have more and greater and better information than I do. So if you want to learn more about and cover you know, study about that topic, certainly I'm not the person uh, to, I mean, I have my perspectives. I've shared my insight on all that, but I'm no expert with regard to all of that. Yeah, there's another channel that I've, watched quite extensively in the past when I was diving into this topic and someone in the chat recommended it also is uh, John Levy um, and also Martin Ledke he's he's got great information he's he's just a wealth of knowledge I mean if, if you want to dive into this topic uh, that he he's got a good channel um, I think you've inter been, interviewed him too Zen right Martin? oh yeah I, I love Martin and what he's doing uh, I think he's a great researcher uh, I love a lot of his work, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely been on the the cusp, the forefront, and has been a pioneer in this topic, this issue. And so, yeah, uh, God bless him with all that he's doing in regard to this. Yeah, um, and there's a question that from Leonard Allen that goes right along with this topic. Then, uh, do you think the Watchers provided this technology? Um, I, absolutely. I, I think that it, not necessarily directly to a specific person or culture, but they did provide this technology, this information um, to those that they were ruling over. And so they have always utilized uh, technology for their own benefit and for their own advancement and to manipulate the people. That's why they have, um, you know, when natural uh, heavenly events like eclipses and things like that happen, solstices, equinoxes, that they will demand you know, blood sacrifice and the sacrifice of victims and children and hearts and things like that and so uh yeah i i definitely think all the high technology is without a doubt connected to the fallen angels connected to their banishment here that they have been uh, for a very long time banished to this world and they have been doing what they can to survive and to make it their own world and kingdom to rule over. Yes, I agree. Uh, that's it. And I'm sorry, the world is a theater. I didn't see your question. I'm not sure if you put it in all caps, but yes, uh, and Leonard Allen is saying, thank you, Zen, for that answer. Um, and I, we well, see too in, in the Book of Enoch, all the things that the Watchers taught the taught mankind and, and the women that they were with. and. Uh, it's it's basically how teaching men how to kill each other, you know, things that are not helpful for healing and not helpful for living a godly life, for sure. Yes, yes. Um, the world is a theater. I'm so sorry. I I think I might have missed your question. If you could please repost that, I'm gonna yeah, try to see, it, that and see it. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I see more comments. If you guys have any other questions. Um, someone mentioned the um, Ben Jr. said the the old ones say the Na on the Navajo reservation that this was known as the land of giants. I agree. You know the oh, without a doubt. Yeah, when you really look at examine uh, what was here before the Native peoples, uh, you know even even Abraham Lincoln brings it up in a speech that he made at Niagara Falls talking about the the giants and how they were here and 
previously and that this knowledge was common, you know, in those times. Yes, yes, for sure. And just knowing that the I mean, and you can even see the the number of pyramids that are here in North America. I mean, there's so much that's been hidden from us with our history and and covered up by by various things that, like you said, the liquefaction, the there's um, just even wildlife growing on these structures. It's hard to see it underneath, but there's so many pyramids and mounds and evidence for the the giants that has just been so covered up by uh, by like the Smithsonian or you know there there's you've done so many shows on on this as well Zen where uh, you just describing the level of deception and what we have not been taught I mean to me it would have been it would have made school so much more interesting if we had learned all of these things it would have just been so much better than U.S. history or the other right. topic that, <laughs> Yeah, it's just it would have been just so exciting to go to school if we were taught all these things instead of the narrative that was made up for us to learn. Yeah, people might have actually been interested. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's just oh my goodness. Um, Jay Mary has a couple questions here. Are some Germans related to the Nephilim and are the Aryans the giants? Um, read the first part of that question. The Germans. Um, yeah, she's asking: Are some of the Germans related to the Nephilim? Is one of the the questions here. I, I'm maybe guessing that might have to do something with the, why the Nazis. The Nazis. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely believe that they are. They even, you know, uh, the Nazis trace back their bloodlines to uh, the those what they call the Aryan races and they were those that were connected to the fallen angels and their uh, you know their involvement here their addiction into the affairs of humanity and certainly that's what they were doing when they were genetically testing and looking and examining uh, all the the, the races of humanity too to kind of trace down and learn and study that more uh, but with regard to you know any people culture nationality i think that everybody is a mixed multitude now and that we're not just because uh, we're so far from that time that the the pure bloodlines of both not saying that they don't exist because i without a doubt believe that synagogue of satan are those that are of the devil the children of the wicked one um and that there are pure bloodlines related to uh yahushua the, the messiah and adam and that bloodline as well uh, but for the most part, everybody is mixed and, you know, we don't really know anymore as to, because when, even when you do a DNA check, it's like uh, all well, over the board. Exactly. Exactly. I, you know, my son Isaac is adopted and uh, when he turned 18, he asked me if he could do one of those because they never actually, we will read in my book, if, if you read it uh, to anyone in the chat, that they never, they still have never actually located Isaac's biological father, even though um, I was a social worker, so I, I had had his whole file, and there's like three guys, I guess, that came forward, and so he really wanted to know what nationality he was, because all he had is that his his biological mother was Irish and Scottish and English, and if you look at Isaac, he does not look any one of those three things. Yeah, so, man. So he did the, I mean, I didn't advise him to do it just because it's now that I know, especially it's through the government and, and it's not really an accurate thing, but he came back with like, I think 12 or 13 different nationalities and different percentages of each one. And he did have actually those three is the top three nationalities that he was. So that's kind of interesting how, how that came out. So maybe partially true. I, I just, I'm not sure how they'd even track that down to all these locations, but it is definitely an interesting thing, but I agree with you, Zen. I, I think that we're all just so mixed now that that the majority of the people that in this world are um, mixed with numerous nationalities. I mean, even if 
your birth certificate says just one thing, it's more likely several or, or you know, maybe even over 10 things. You, you don't even really know. Uh, but uh, there's another question here from Jason and Jessica Miller. And I think we're getting, are we going to take a break today at, at the top of the hours then in a few minutes? Yes, yes, we are. Uh, okay, this will be. I think this is a quick question from Jason right, and Jessica yeah. Miller. Yeah, do, I don't know if you see this one or is, uh, they're asking, Zen, do you have more books in the works to publish? I'm enjoying each one I have so far. Just curious, what's in the pipeline? Um, yes, I do. I, I always have books that I would like to finish and books that I would like to work on. Uh, I have not, you know, as those of you that have been listening know, I haven't felt good, so I haven't felt up to being productive and focusing that hard in an effort to bring forth something. And so uh, that's why I've taken, you know, the last year off with regard to publishing anything. Um, but yes, uh, what, what do I have upcoming that I want to do? Uh, I want to publish the book of Teffy. Um, and I will do that at some very, uh, recent point when i get chance and opportunity to do that i'll love to do that and i want to also publish a a book of poetry um to catch up on some of the things that i've been working on for a very long time and a lot of work that i've had sitting idle for literally years i mean even my flat earth awakening coming to knowledge on biblical cosmology all those different things which were absolutely mind-blowing for me at that time but um so yeah those are a couple books and i want to finish uh, the great contest three uh, the sons of anak and you know the 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 children of the serpent um and to show the connections as far as modern times you know, and who those people are and explaining you know the the nature of the world and why it is we see the prevalence of evil, who the uh, the synagogue of Satan is, and the Rothschilds and those who say they are Jews and are not all all of those kind of things I want to um, do. So I mean that's three books right there that I already have most of the manuscripts even written, and I just have to revise and finalize and put it out, but. Uh, when you don't feel good and you don't have the energy and don't have the focus, you can't do it. Um, yeah. It's a struggle. Yeah, you've published so much in just the past decades. And I mean, even just the right before the conference, you had two made very thick books published. <laughs> I just, I give you so much credit for doing that. That's just, it's amazing the amount of quality work that you've put out even and not even feeling a hundred percent it's just it's amazing yeah that was the the last time and um i i really forced myself you know to get those books done for the conference and to have that available because well first that year i finished and i had published the rod of wonder and the uh, I mean, the Vestures of Light and the Rod of Wonder, which uh, that was so fun. That was just a very intriguing book to write. And all the information was just, wow, mind blowing for me to to check it out. But uh, and I know we're at break, so I'll explain more when we come back. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take break and then I'll get into it further when we return. OK, sounds good. All right. Hold on one
All right. Uh, I do believe we are through the commercial break. Um, yeah, I see a regular thing on, so we should be good. Thank you, everybody, again for joining us. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed here. Well, should be on TFR, but something's wrong. Something's definitely going on with the network. I'll reach out and try to find out and give y'all an answer very soon. Um, but this is our 87th Ask Me Anything, which is just absolutely what? mind-blowing to me. Two hours each episode, how much that adds up to, I don't know. But please do support and give us a like and subscribe and you know share uh, our work and information with others. And uh, hopefully it will be a, a benefit. Lisa? Yeah, we've had uh, several questions come in during the break, Zen. I don't know if oh, you good. want to dive into those right away. Um, there's two that came in from Jane Mary. Uh, first question that she's asking is, do you believe the Antichrist is here now? I do believe that the physical form of what will be the vehicle that the Antichrist, which I believe that the spirit of Antichrist is going to be a Pollyan, a Baden, and that it is a fallen angelic presence that has been, you know, part of Legion since the first banishment of Lucifer, Satan, Samael, the angel of death uh, from the high heavens on what is said in the second book of Enoch, chapter 29, to be the second day. And so, um, uh, what was the question again? Oh, do you believe the Antichrist is here now? Oh, right, right. And so, yes, I do. And, you know, here's where um, Dr. Joy, we know that she wrote the book, The Antichrist, uh, cloned image of Christ, and she believes that the DNA is going to be uh, cloned from what will be the Shroud of Turin. And, you know, of course, I believe that the Antichrist is going to be an alternate, an evil, a wicked, uh, a false Christ. Um, but, you know, again, I, I believe that the spirit is going to be fallen angelic and able to do signs and wonders and to uh, do things that normal people aren't able to. And I also believe that with the revealing of the man of sin and what is the great falling away that we also have put into place what is the strong delusion and that all of these things will be followed up and connected to the unveiling of the beast kingdom ai technology uh the whole uh, what's the, the sentience um Neuralink, you know, with cyborg technology fusing humanity with this um internet AI chip, um, you know, that kind of thing. And I I think also that uh it, whether the body is gonna be somebody that is from these elitist families and of royal bloodline the seed of the serpent and i could totally see you know uh william being that person only because he was strategically placed into the womb of princess diana to be born on the summer solstice the longest day of the year the same day that they do the cremation and care ceremonies in bohemian grove and uh do you know those kind of sacrifices and so, um, yeah, that's that's my take on it. Uh, I do believe that with the, you know, coming forth of the man of sin and the Pollyanna Baden, that they will also make the declaration that they are the ancient Sumerian gods, that they are the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came, uh, that they, you know, came down a long time ago and seated Humanity is what their declaration will be, that they mix themselves with the ape or whatever the 
uh, Sasquatch, whatever it is, that they are going to declare themselves as God and in the temple of God. And uh, yeah, and then the two witnesses will see Enoch and Elijah and uh, they will convict the Antichrist and be killed in the streets of Jerusalem by him. Yeah, I I think my favorite book that has that De- those details in it is the apocalypse of elijah it's just it's so yeah, clear yeah. what to look for what he's going to look like what he's going to do you know it's um and it aligns with revelation and it aligns, it aligns aligns with the other prophetic books and sibylline oracles as well they there's some pretty good descriptions in those books um i feel like we should give out a book here um we need a question. Okay. Do you have one handy? Uh, give me a sec. Let me see. I don't have one written down, but I can find one. I think I'm going to find one that people can find either in the Bible in one of the other scriptures. Yeah, okay. something simple. Doesn't okay. have to be greatly challenging. But okay. yeah, we're going to, uh, I think we're going to give away a Great Commission 3 book here, which is on the end time apocalypses and would be appropriate for this topic and this conversation so okay i got a question so everybody in chat um what was did you have i'm sorry i missed what you just said zen did did you say the title of the book you're going to give away yes the great commission three on the end time apocalypses since is uh you know has the apocalypse of elijah in it and uh so many other end time narratives i think uh, for people that are students of prophecy, it will be a great, great blessing. That's an awesome book. It's that I think that that's the one I always tell people too. If they're trying to figure out which book that they want to choose that has prophetic, very prophetic content, and also you've also said Zen that if you had to choose one book to go through the tribulation with, right, that this would be the yeah, one. Yeah. Great commission. That would three. be the one. Yes. That's the one. Okay, so for this book, everybody, listen up. Here is the question. Okay, this is a very simple question, and it's found in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. What is the Hebrew name for Apollyon? And just put, this is one word, put it in the chat. First person to get it in there gets the book. What is the Hebrew name for Apollyon? You, you're you not going to believe this. But that is, when I was thinking in my mind, you know, about a question, that's the exact thing that I was going to ask. What? what does the word Apollyon Abaddon mean? Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, and it connections to, you know, the destroyer in the Colburn Bible. But I'm just absolutely wow. blown away right now. That is so crazy. Whoa, that's unreal. You know, Zen, right? that's not the first time that's happened to me when you've said something. You know? <laughs> it's happened right? with me in reverse. It's a little, a little interesting. But we do have a winner, uh, Gal right. Gosh- uh, congratulations, the first person to put right. in there, a bad in. Good job. There's so many people. All you guys got it right. Thank you so much for participating. Gal just had her fingers working the fastest here. <laughs> so, Gal, if you can yeah. please send an email to Sacred Word Publishing at uh, Sacred Word Publishing LLC at gmail.com. Just put in here that you won the contest that for the free book giveaway during the show and and include- the name of the book, The Great Commission yes. Three. Yes, put the name of the book and your address in there, please, Gal. And congratulations. Thank you guys all for participating. And that's so unreal, Zen. I'm still... I know. It's so crazy. It just it shows. And to me, it's a confirming witness, another sign, you know, of uh, the Most High and uh, the blessings on what we're doing and the synchronicity, uh, the connections. So, yeah, very cool. Oh. Yeah, that is super cool. Um, Gal just said in the chat she already has this book, and do we want to choose? Maybe should we go for the second person that got this right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That, said, that, I think that would be fair. Oh, Gal, thank you so much for giving that up since you already have it. We give it somebody else a chance who does not have this awesome book right, yet. Right. Yeah. Thank you. The second, the the runner up is the two beauties. Um, although the spelling is a little off, it's okay. We understand. <laughs> we yeah. know, I know you met a bad and, a, a, and so two beauties, same instructions I just gave for Gal, uh, send the email to 
sacredwoodpublishingllc at gmail.com. Put the name The Great Commission and put your address and say you just won the book. So thank you. Thank you, Gal, and congratulations, the two beauties. We appreciate all of you for participating in that. Yes, um, thank you so much. We appreciate y'all. And speaking of Gal, she has the next question. Are there any more developments with Bishop Guide about the Thraki or Thraki documents? Uh, that's a great question. And I actually need to reach out to them because, uh, yes, they did send me a video uh, response uh, about the feast and the Enochian calendar about a month ago. But honestly, I have not even watched it or opened it because I've just been so just messed up and not, you know, focused on work and uh, just uh, spending a lot of time just sitting outside in the sun to feel good and to feel better. And uh, so, um, but yes, I'll be reaching out to them and I will provide an update very soon because uh, I know I'm behind. That is one of the priorities and one of the most important things for me uh, in regard to because Dr. Uh, Bishop Guide was to come on with us once a month but we haven't set that up yet because of you know just I've just been in crisis mode so uh, but I'm grateful for a, a turning point and I will reach out and give uh, an update very soon on all the Thracian Chronicles material, the information, and um, any new updates and any new information very soon. So thank you for your interest and for keeping me on point and in task with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think um, Bishop Guide actually reached out to us as well as far as, is he the person that is in charge of like working with you about doing the translation of those documents? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, because uh, part of it is it in Hebrew as well. I, I'm trying yes, to. Yes, uh -huh. it is. Okay, yeah. He asked, he reached out, um, he heard Noble on your show and also has seen our, you know, you promote our Hebrew Hawaiian channel with the Hebrew teachings right. and I asked if Noble would be willing to get involved with that, which of course he's. he's oh, more that's than, awesome. Yeah, he's more than happy to work with with you guys on that, and especially now that the projects are are in the back burner, he has, he can totally focus on studies and and things that he's been wanting to do as uh, as far. As you know what that means? <laughs> that I'll be able to share with you the actual manuscripts that I have because. I've been asked not to share those, and I've been very careful to not do that, to not what? share them or send them out or give them to people. Um, I've made them all public through audio and have read, you know, all the stories and all that, but I've, yes. I've been asked not to send out the word files. or. But since you're going to be involved with the project, I can share <laughs> with you and no one. It's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. You. You think um, you've been, you know, interested in reading a lot of extra biblical. This stuff is going to blow your mind. And yeah, that's awesome that Noble's going to be on board and helping us. Uh, yeah. I, I love that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. He was really excited when it, they, he actually reached out to us, I think, in the middle of the craziness when we were back and forth to Wisconsin and, and, and the wedding. And it's just been such a crazy several months here ever since uh october it's just been kind of wild but we we've, we've responded already to him and he's responded again to us and so great great in the works so yeah that's exciting so i'll but, reach out tomorrow to everybody and uh put us on a a group and i'll i'll introduce you to the the other members of the group too and the other translators and so yeah this uh this gives me drive uh, to be productive and to get some things done in regard to this topic because yes. you know I, I feel like we should have had this done a decade ago you know but yeah and since you're feeling better now too oh my goodness yeah, be exactly. so much easier. you don't have that brain fog happening and and you feel stronger and and it's easier to be motivated and to do things because I, I know that feeling believe me it's just it's it's hard and there's so many things that you want to do but you just you can't until you're healed so and just praise the most high you are you're on the road to full healing as far as your 
you know, that can't yeah, do that. That is the prayer, absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Gal, for that question. And thank you again for being willing to uh, let somebody else have a chance with that book. Um, next yeah. question is from Leonard. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get the most recent questions. I've seen some come through here. I just have to uh, take note of those. But this is from a little while ago. Um, Leonard is asking, do you believe the Nephilim built the ark? No. Uh, if you're talking about Noah's Ark, no. It actually, it speaks about um, in the Targum and other places that the angels led the animals to Noah and also uh, that they instructed him. The angel of the Lord who shut him in also instructed him uh, on the creation and how to uh, you know, make the ark. And so, yeah, no, the Nephilim did not have anything to do with, uh, however, the, the stories in the Sumerian, uh, they say that, you know, they created their own um, craft and that they went above, um, you know, the clouds and were able to escape judgment that way. Uh, with regard to um, you know the the flood and and in the Sumerian, what they say actually led to and caused part of the worldwide flood. Uh, they say that the now, of course, I don't believe this because I know different and better now, but they say that the ice cap had slipped off of Antarctica and had plunged into the ocean and that's what caused the water levels to you know rise uh, and of course you know we know that's not true because antarctica is not a continent but the circle the uh the ends of the earth uh as is, is related within scripture okay all right so thank you for that zen i agree with that as well um Next question is from Juan. Is the Holy Spirit working harder or waning in the last days? Uh, working harder. I mean, rev the revelation of truth. I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. You know, you know, men, women, old men, young men, young women, everybody will dream dreams, have visions, and uh, receive prophecy. And that without a doubt is clearly what we are seeing and uh you know looking at what is happening in israel right now and uh, with uh iran having struck them directly uh with these hypersonic missiles that you know they of course mainstream media didn't show any of that uh but these hypersonic missiles were the final stage of all those slow attack drones and missiles that were launched, which 90% of them were shot down and destroyed. But those hypersonic missiles, if they would have launched 100 of them, they could have leveled Israel. And so um, we are in very serious times. And without a doubt, the whole uh, lineup for all these confederation of these uh, sons of Belial, children of perdition, uh, without a doubt, all that is happening. It's in our face. If you can't see it, or if you're still in denial about it, I, I just, that is beyond me because it is so evident, so clear that that's where we are in regard to, um, you know, where we are in the timeline of the end. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, Seeker of Truth has a question. Do your, any of your books explain the Khazarians? Yeah. Um, Lucifer, Father of Cain, and also The Great Contest too, The Enmity Between the Seen Lines. And, uh, but I don't go, you know, in great, tremendous amounts of detail on it because it's a story that has been... Uh, well researched, examined, studied, and brought forth um, 
but yes, I do cover the topic in those two places. Okay, um, <clears throat> Mr. Hamilton has a question. Who will be with Jesus in the millennium? Only those who never knew Christ? That's his question. Who never knew Christ? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if he worded that, if he meant to, who knew Christ instead of never, but I'm not sure. He, his main one is who will be with Jesus in the millennium? It, it, it's my opinion that, you know, those that are numbered with the elect, that God willing and God bless them are numbered with the elect and have um, receiving their glorified form, they enter into what will be the Sabbath rest. And so, yeah, the, you know, the whole the parable of the wheat and the tares, the separation, let both grow together until the time of the end. And at the time of the end, uh, Christ said he'll send forth his angels as reapers to gather the tares for burning and the wheat for preservation. And so, yeah, that's that's where we are. That's where we, what we see. So, Okay. Um, I'm going to ask this question because this goes along with the, the Thracian text we were just talking about from Shea. Uh, he just asked this. He is wondering if the, does the, the Thracian text contain the same books as the Torah, or is it a unique work? No, they're completely a unique work. Now, there is a uh, Thracian Bible called the Bessia Bible, and the the bishop has this as well. I do not have a copy. Uh, I'm very interested in getting my hands on a copy and examining it and studying it uh, for myself. But currently, uh, this is something we do not possess. But there is, you know, as I said, a, an ancient Bessia Bible. And this is the Bible that was used by the Thracian people uh, when they were at war with Rome. So, um, and it's mentioned in the book of Ari, which for... Um, those that are interested in the Thracian Chronicles, I cover this on the playlist that we have. Um, in the book of Ari, Ari means wisdom keeper, the holders of the secret, the guardians of the knowledge, uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, and it tells the whole history of the Thracian people post-flood all the way through, you know, even taking over in Egypt and all through the Mediterranean and all the way to the east. And um, and so very interesting text, and I have shared it, I believe, in its entirety. It's called the Book of Ari, and there's several um, several shows that I've done on this text. And, yeah, lots of incredible information coming forth from the Thracian narrative. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that so much. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Zen. Uh, Jay Mary has a question about evil. She's asking, where does evil come from? She knows that God didn't create it. Uh, evil came from the rebellion of the angels. And the moment that iniquity was found within Samael, the angel of death, who desired to be like the Most High. He wanted to uh, establish his throne uh his his seat above the stars and the clouds of god and to be like the most high that was his intent the whole basis of the new world order the establishment of a one world government the push to bring everybody together uh, as far as the atlantean empire uh the you know story that Plato talks about and shares with us is that even in ancient times, the Atlanteans uh, fighting against the Athenians, that they were trying to establish a one world order and to put and to place control over all the people, uh, even in those ancient times. And we see in the story of uh, the Sumerian tales, the Anunnaki, how they tried to. Uh, control and make a slave race of uh, the pre-Adamites. So yeah, lots of lots of information, lots of knowledge to to glean and to learn about. 
Yes, and again, uh, for those of you who haven't checked out the website, please go and look at sacredwordpublishing.com in the bookstore. There's all these books that Zen and I refer to. They're all available in, well, not 100%. I want to correct myself because not the Thracian ones. Those are oral. Zen has read right. those on this channel. But, yes, on the playlist and a playlist called the Thracian Chronicles. But at the bookstore, you can get these in paper copy. The majority of the books that we're mentioning here, if it's not at this bookstore, Zen and I will also refer to other places you can get, like the New Testament Apocrypha is, is not there, but it's a uh, huge am amount of extra biblicals and other books that Zen has written in the past decade or so, and uh, or even longer than that, but maybe what, 15 or 20 years, I think now, Zen, that you've been oh. writing? Yeah, it goes back to 2010. Oh, wow. Uh, it was the publication of my fourth book. And I published my first book in 1992. So, yeah, wow. crazy how, how the time has passed and changed. Oh, that, so that's crazy. amazing. Uh, uh, there's a question that I'm interested in this one, too. Uh, this is from Angela. She's asking, what is your opinion on Nephi in the Book of Mormon? Is it a Nephilim because they're described as being large in stature? And she was just commenting how that even just the name is a little bit questionable. Uh, you say the book of Nephi? Um, the character of Nephi in, in the Book of, of Mormon. Or uh, she said that, I mean, I haven't read the whole thing. I've read parts of it. But uh, there's a character and there's also that book of Nephi in there. She's asking if, if that is another word another way to say nephilim if there's a, a relationship between nephilim and nephi in as mentioned in the book of mormon and she said that there is a quote in there that says that this this person or this being was large of stature um i would i would love for her to send that to us or to put it in the chat and uh you know where i could look it up and read it in greater context but I'm not familiar, so I can't say with any certainty. Um, but I, you know, I am interested in examining it, looking at it with greater detail, and giving a more informed opinion at a later time. Okay. Perhaps the next AMA, or we can revisit the topic. Yes. Are yes. you familiar? Do you know what she's talking about? Um, yeah, she actually just put a, a comment in here. Pronounced Nephi with a long I. Nephi. So, you know, I, I've read parts of it and I, I'm going to have to go and revisit it again just to see what she's talking about here. But that is a good question. And I, if you could put in, Angela, if you could put where that's found in, if it's in the Book of Nephi or in the Book of Mormon itself, where it talks about this being being large of stature, I'd be really interested in, in reading that. If you, if you have like a a chapter verse or something so i can take a look that up oh she said it's in the very first book and first chapters of the book of mormon okay okay we'll have to take a look at that and maybe we can answer it like Zen said in our next ask me anything after we have a chance to read that a oh, long e as well okay Nif uh nephi i'm not sure if i pronounce it okay right. yeah we will definitely get back to you on that okay and but there's a Yes, thank you, Angela. She also has a question. Uh, can you differentiate between Samael and Azazel? Um, uh, other than, you know, as far as when you look at the, the Targum in Genesis 3-6, we see that the serpent is specifically named and said to be Samael, the angel of death. Um, in the Traditions of the Jews, which was a book put out by Johann Eisenminger in 1700, and when he published this book, the, you know, all the copies were actually rounded up and burned by the emperor uh, over the Catholic Church at that time. And he, it broke his heart, and he actually had a heart attack and died. But uh, he, somebody like 40 years later, 30 years later, somebody had preserved a copy from the fire and then re-released it. But anyways, in that particular manuscript, it tells us that uh, Samael, Azazel, Shemyaza, 
Lucifer, they are all the same being. They are all the same entity. And that, um, I forget exactly what Azam means. Uh, but, you know, even like Satan Nael is uh, the adversary of El. Uh, and so a lot of those, like Beliar means the worthless one, things like that, they they are more titles than names. They became names over the years and as, you know, the, the power, the principalities, the rulers of darkness, the main one as far as the forces of Legion, uh, Samael, uh, has come to be known to us by all these different names and people get this entity uh, confused with, you know, all these different names and titles. But again, it's uh, more what he was called, Satan, you know, the worthless one, the uh, the wicked one, or the adversary of God, or adversary of man. All those titles and uh, indications are, you know, in relation to him, but they're not an actual name. His actual name, as it is mentioned, is Samael, which means the viper of God, so... Okay, thank you so much, Zen. There's a little bit more information coming out of here in the chat, and I'm so sorry, uh, Jason and Jessica Miller. I scrolled back and I was trying to find your question. They said that they asked something about cosmology. If if you can please put that in all caps, and if you don't mind uh, putting it in the chat again, then I'll make sure to ask Zen uh, your question. But Angela's sharing some more information about this this thing with the, I, I, I know I'm not gonna say it right, Nephi or, or Nephi or, uh, she said in the Book of Ether, in the Book of Mormon, it talks about the Jaredites coming from the Tower of Babel, and they were large men known for their largeness. So it's interesting stuff. And I, I agree. I mean, the Book of Mormon, it seems like one of those books that I, I wanted to continue reading. And I, this is quite a while ago that I read it, so I don't really remember uh, the parts of it. But we definitely will look at this, Angela, because um, I think both Zen and I are intrigued by your knowledge of the Book of Mormon. and uh, it's it's something that a lot of people are are not too excited to read just because of the religious group it's tied with. But I believe that there is some truth in there and that we could learn some things from it. Um, oh, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I, I do believe that as well. And uh, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, that city that's up there in Ohio um, with all the big mounds that that is connected to the Jaredites as well. Uh, and it shows, you know, that the bones of giants were found within those mound structures. And a lot of these ancient mound structures uh, possess the skeletons of giants all throughout. There's even some here in Georgia. There's a uh, one in Etowah called, uh, you know, the Eagle Mound. Or, uh, and it is also in, in similarity connected to these ancient peoples that were here before even the Native Americans in this particular. And I do believe that as that the, the Book of Mormon says, and as other things that we've come to know uh, with ancient America, you know, things like that, that we've learned that there have been many travelers and many different groups, even Egyptian, even Joseph, you know, the story of Joseph and how he came up in the deserts of Utah by following tunnels from under the paw of the Sphinx in Egypt here to America. So, and even the the Hopi, you know, they have the stories of how uh, they were led by the ant people out from the tunnels of the earth, and that's how they ended up coming up and being uh, in the Southwest here in America. So, lots of um, intriguing stories preserved found in you know relics and ancient manuscripts and i think there's uh something intriguing to the whole idea of um you know, joseph smith being led to this whatever these plates were uh because even the what was the brewer uh, the guy that found the the tomb of the giants 
and he pulled out all those metal books. Uh, and even in um, Central America, you know, there's the story in not Colombia, uh, one of those countries uh, in Central America that talk about these metallic libraries that were found. And uh, Father Crispy, who was there among the native peoples, uh, he was given all these ancient artifacts. And I mean, literally pages of these metal manuscripts that are six feet tall, you know, and they were said to be found in these caves that had all these ancient libraries. And so I think there's a lot of information, a lot of uh, new knowledge uh, that is coming forth. And with our discernment now that we know that truly um, previous to um, the coming of our ancestors, Adam and Eve, that there was a superior race as far as the fallen angels and their giants and that they were all, you know, here before we were, and that there was much knowledge, much information, much technology preserved, passed on, shared, which we, because the scientists say that, oh, we were hunters and gatherers and we were primitive people in ancient times. None of that makes any kind of sense with what's going on and what's being discovered. Uh, but for those of us that have eyes to see, ears to hear and a mind to understand, we're able to you know, come to discernment on all these things and what's being found and released now. Yes, for sure. I mean, even here in Hawaii, I remember when I, I lived in Maui, my first teaching job when I was 21 was on Maui and I was there by myself and drove around the island so much because I had never lived on any other island besides Oahu. And they uh, had, this is like 1991, I think, 1990, uh, they had, uh, had they made some announcements. I'm actually surprised now that they actually even announced this, but that they'd found some skeletons of very large red haired giants uh, on Maui. And that uh, there was an Australian uh, historical society or something with a ship, that, a very large ship that was in the harbor in Maui when I used to pass it on my way to when I was driving to school. And uh, they said that they had these Australians had come in and taken, uh, maybe they're related to the Masonians, who knows the Smithsonian's, but they had taken the bones and they loaded them on the ship and nobody heard of them again. Right, just yeah, they dropped off a lot of that in the middle of the ocean, but yeah. Um, I would, you know, for those people that are interested in wanting to to learn more and to, and with regard to what's happening in the world, without a doubt, I would be an underwater archaeologist because mm. there are so many cities and uh, huge amounts of treasures and you know cultures and civilizations that are under the water and that the discoveries because they're under the water they are still you know preserved and uh, people can find all kind of amazing things in my opinion and that that would be my focus uh if you know i was able body and had a chance to do it all again oh that would be such an interesting career to have or even just a as like a, a side hobby if there was funding or something right. for that and it, even just to look and be able to see like the rivers of eden like you've been discussing with tim that the all of yeah. that and the civilizations that live i'm sure there was quite a few cities that live right next to those you know to for all of the fish and their everything else that they that they provided for people before the flood I, I just it's amazing to think that there's so much and you know two-thirds of the world is water there's got to be so much underneath there that we have no clue about right and you know what tim was talking about uh from that quote that he found in second ezra it spoke about how the world during the first world age that it was only 30 percent water and mostly land and so i i mean that is a an incredible discovery and one that aligns with all the work that i've done and so that means and because we're like 70 percent covered by water now just yes. how much uh 
you know, was above the sea level in ancient times. Oh, for sure. And a place that I found some information online, I mean, there's there's quite a bit of information online about this, but a website that you referred to me as then that sacred-texts.com. You can go yeah. down and look under like uh, Native American, you know, they, they have even they even have a Polynesian section of all of their ancient writings. There, That is a huge library. And just to go and just explore that, there's so many interesting tales of people encountering gigantic bones or giants themselves or uh, I, like I, I went into the one in Polynesian and there's just hundreds of, of different manuscripts in there that, that people could really enjoy digging into and in that at that website and I'll put that in the chat so people can go check that out. Um, there's also quite a bit of extra biblicals there as well that that's Actually, before I even knew about your bookstores, then that's where I used to go to just dig in and do reading of the Testaments of the Patriarchs and the Book of Enoch, Book of Joshua. Before I had any paper copies, that was a really good resource that you would give out during your shows. Uh, right on. That's yeah. Awesome. Thank Makes you. So good. I'm also going to share another, um, especially for individuals that have the knowledge like Noble and that can read the Hebrew and the Aramaic directly. There's a, ma a website called Safaria, S-E-F-A-R-I-A, -E -A, that have a lot of ancient uh, Hebrew Jewish manuscripts that are not translated into English yet. And so, you know, if you have knowledge and insight, check out some of these manuscripts and translate them and get in touch with us and uh, share them and let us share them with others. Uh, I think that would be an awesome thing. Yeah, um, there's a question. I, I Thank you so much, Jason and Jessica Miller, for relisting your question. I don't know how I missed this earlier, but they're asking, Zen, which video on biblical cosmology would you recommend to a small group of young people to watch first? Oh, biblical cosmology. <laughs> yeah, back um, to the days. <laughs> Hmm. I I would say the shows that Rob and I did together, like the, and there are many we did, you know, because we did a number of shows together on our awakening to uh, not only flat earth, but the firmament that was so important as well. We did all of that information. And so I would look up biblical cosmology and Rob Skiba and Garcia. Because uh, we had, you know, roundtable discussions, that kind of stuff. Um, but those are the ones that I would look to first. Um, and I can provide, well, there's a playlist um, on our YouTube channel as well for my um, Flat Earth Awakening, uh, where I talk about geocentrism and all that and how I came to knowledge about this stuff and, you know, sharing it. And uh, and so you can find those um, videos as well. But, you know, with regard and not talking about my work, uh, but I think ODD and uh, uh, Flat Earth Dave, I think they have a number of short videos that are precise and that are specific to this topic that would be uh, a great blessing you know for people that are new to this material that are interested that want to know i also think uh eric dubay 200 proofs of the earth being flat uh, i think that video and that information is absolutely worthy uh and would be convincing. In fact, the, uh, when I told one of my friends that recently embraced and came to this information uh, and even tried to tell his family and friends and quickly discovered how much nobody wants to hear about this, um, <laughs> that was the video I showed him, 200 Proofs, and he was like, oh my gosh, he just mouth opened and you know just blown away. So yeah, do that one. Yeah, I like that one too. That one, that one is one I would recommend for sure. It's like a first video to introduce people to this topic. Yeah. 
it's it, whatever you want to whatever you're going to show it needs to be pretty much to the point because it has to break through the cognitive sure, dissonance yeah. that everyone's going to have and so um yeah zen you and rob did some amazing work i mean my my awakening to our biblical cosmology i think it was right around the same time as you like end of 2014 2015 uh, that was actually when one of my friends introduced me to YouTube as well. So I was diving into so many videos from you, Rob, other people. Um, Gal also, uh, Gal Gotha also recommends in the chat, uh, Celebrate Truth. They, I, I remember they had yeah. a video called Scientism that was yeah, very, yeah. like, that. it was kind of shortened to the point. But those 200 proofs of Flat Earth, that's a very, like, very to the point, just because it's, they just go one right after the other. And uh, and I, I appreciate yours and Rob's work, though, Zen, just because out of almost all the other uh, YouTube channels and, and content creators that I was studying back in 2015, uh, yours and Rob's was the most consistent in linking it to scripture and to other books. And instead of focusing on all of the, the ridiculousness of NASA and the, the, the other proofs and everything that I like it. I really liked your, I chose yours and Rob's research to primarily focus on just because it's so easy to prove with scripture. And you guys were just like always super on target with all of these different verses that you could link to this topic. And so I really appreciate your work then. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks. And uh, we appreciate it. You know, we, it was a great blessing for he and I to be awaken to this topic at the same time and to be able to do the work together that we did especially since he was taken you know just prematurely from us uh um and so yeah i was uh grateful to be able to to do the series that we did not just on biblical cosmology and applying it to genesis and the book of enoch and the chapter by chapter the verse by verse stuff that we did there um yeah it was a it was a great blessing to be able to do that uh together because we were confirming witness for one another you know yes yes that's what i appreciated about it because you know everyone else it seemed like they were kind of they did interviews among each other and but no one uh seemed to have like the confirmation that you and rob had in between and you know I, i'm not knocking any of the other researchers they they all helped me in in my journey to awakening to that truth because oh my goodness when i when noble's brother first mentioned it even just out of the blue to me i was so angry with him <laughs> my, uh, my, yeah, my no. cognitive business was so bad because i was i was an educator i'd been teaching this stuff for how many uh. years and I was I'm, Noble's brother is, is close with both Noble and myself, and I would not talk to him for two months because I was so oh mad. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was a different Lisa than you know today. That was yeah. the they used to work for the government, Lisa. So um, right, right. Raised yeah. by a pastor, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, married that, to a Hebrew, and uh, I mean uh, <laughs> to a Hebrew and Aramaic scholar, Greek scholar. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that was a different Noble back then, too, because I don't know. Yeah, if yeah. Then, but Noble and I used to be, oh, Noble was a 501c3 church pastor full time when I first met him. Wow. And, and I, crazy. I know. And so he's giving sermons every Sunday and then they needed a piano player for his church and I play piano. So I was up there in front with him. <laughs> with him every right. Sunday when, when we just even just were friends when we first met and started that dating. so funny. We were like the church leaders. It's so bizarre to look back wow. at that. <laughs> yeah, and that congregation's still going. I mean, it's it's kind of barely hanging on, but it, Noble just had to call it quits when they the, they wanted to ordain him, and that meant that he would be required to perform the pronoun weddings, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, well, yeah. That was the yeah, thing. Yeah, good for him. Uh, I wouldn't go no there way. either. Yeah, so, I mean, just the Most High just led us out of that, and that's why I always go back to that, because I was in that for so long. I mean, I was a pastor's wife yet, too, you know, not just a pastor's daughter. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, we there's one more question I think we have time for. This is kind of probably a quick answer from Private Sojourner. Right. I'm, I'm so sorry, everybody else. We're not going to have time for the more recent questions that I haven't responded to. But um, her question is, was the eclipse a sign or planned? Uh, or in your 
it's a it's a sign and it's also planned by the most high uh you know because he told us uh within the scriptures that especially at the end there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars um and, and without a doubt that's what we see uh, and then you know the whole thing of how there were seven salems with the first one and and then the x crossing and uh the connections with uh you know Jonah and Nineveh in the second one i mean i think there's never just coincidence but there's always deeper and more profound meaning and greater uh establishment and um prophetic you know as far as a the profundity of what is happening in these times, especially since we're the fig tree generation. And just like with what I talked about with it, Iran bombing Israel directly, I mean, these are signs uh, of the season that we are in. And so, you, sh- you know, we're, we're to be children of the day, children of the light. Uh, we're to be looking, watching, and waiting and these are the signs you have to understand. Um, and, you know, it, it's hard for me to not I mean, connect all this to what's prophetic. Oh, totally. I totally agree. I mean, I know that there could have been some strange things happening during the eclipse. I, I've seen a, a report that one of my friends, uh, high level military sent me and I'm not sure if I totally, I mean, People have reported who are in that line of totality of these kind of strange uh, side effects afterwards, like feelings of dizziness, nausea, uh, not being able to sleep, um, just kind of overall just feeling like heavy and just like not well. And um, the report that I read, the part that I read, and I again, I, I'm I don't have any other witness to confirm this or anything, but that there were some involvement by the government during uh, over those particular areas where the line of totality were and they knew people were going to be outside and looking up and so they could have amped up the chemtrail spraying especially along those lines to purposely bring on those side effects but again I don't have proof for that I, it's just a report one of my friends sent me and so I just think that's kind of interesting and it just shows like the level of corruption that we're dealing with here for the, I mean they really do want to have the first commandment that was on that uh, Georgia Guidestones come true quickly, right? Yes. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, that is all, you know, part of the process. And that's the number one thing they want to to make happen. You know, the whole poisoning of the food, the water, the air, uh, and why people can't understand. Because why would, you know, the stratospheric aerosol injection that harms them too, but they're doing the bidding of Satan. They're following his commands, and so uh, that's why. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for all participating, and all your questions are so excellent. There's things that I need to look up uh, that you brought to my attention that I've never researched before, and I just really appreciate everyone in the chat and and. Sherry for helping me field the questions and my apologies again for missing some of them. Uh, I, if we didn't cover your questions tonight, uh, we have another Ask Me Anything next month and you can join us again and have a chance to submit your questions as soon as possible when, when we're starting the show so I can get those down and and Zen can, can share his wisdom with us. And we really appreciate you, Zen. Thank you so much. I'm just so glad that you're feeling better and there's people in the chat that notice the difference in your voice and you're just feeling so much healthier and alert and and just overall much just better yeah and i appreciate all of you as well and your prayers for me let us all continue to pray for each other it's a a great honor and i'm you know this is a privilege to be able to do this work and to share the things that we've come to know uh, and feel free to go ahead and continue sending questions to myself, Lisa, even now, you know, we'll we'll get to them. We have a another AMA in a month, but that doesn't mean you have to wait till then to send in your inquiries. So uh, I give out my my email is zengarcia2010 at gmail.com. I do try to respond back. 
uh, I've been a little bit in a you know lag zone because uh, I'm like two weeks behind because I haven't been doing or uh, feeling well. So, but I am catching up and I am responding. And uh, Lisa, would you care to give out your contact and info? No, yes, you can email me at biblicalhebrewhawaii at gmail dot com. You could also go to our Hebrew, if if uh, someone private sojourner said that they tried to email me and there was some issues. So if you are having issues with my email, I, I haven't heard that before that there are issues with it. But you can always go onto our Hebrew Hawaiian channel and just put in the comments in the most recent videos that we've done. I, I think we have one up from two weeks ago. Uh, we'll be having a class again this Saturday, and you can always just, I always go at least once a week, I'll go through there and just see if there's any new comments or things that I need to answer. So if you cannot reach me by my email, that's, another, that's the second best way to get in touch with me. Awesome. Well, again, thank you, everybody. We greatly appreciate you. We um, are praying for all of you, and let's you know, keep the world in our prayers, each other in our prayers. Let's uh, pray for the children and pray for our our, our loved ones, our grandchildren. Uh, you know, I want the world to be a, a beautiful and a positive and a, a beneficial place for each of us, but also for those that are coming. And um, let's be the change that we have always been looking for, waiting for, wanting and wishing would come around. And uh Use our prayers. It's free and and very powerful. Uh, thank you again, everybody. Be blessed. Have thank a you. great night. Thank you. Blessings, Zen. Blessings, everybody. We love you guys. Thank you, Zen. Love y'all. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Shalom. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you, and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you in your seeking.